I'm being told my guest is on the line. I'm going to bring this line up right now. Do I have Greg Turkington on the line? Hey guys, yeah, I'm 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 here. This is Greg Turkington, who is the host, the host. What what what, what should I? How should I refer to? <laughs> it's nice hearing that, actually. Um, yeah, for the last five years, I've been the resident expert for the show on cinema, and uh, this season, I've been bumped up to host. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, and and the 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 show on cinema is a movie review program that I uh, it runs on adultswim.com. Yes, we give expert advice and expert opinions and basically a guide, a blueprint on uh, what you should watch and what you should skip each week. Mhm. Mm when in terms of when you're going to head down to the movie theater. Yeah, yeah, I mean this is a show for movie buffs, but uh and, you know, people who really know their stuff. And especially this new season, because I've got a new sidekick on the show who's actually, uh, aside from myself, one of the country's foremost film experts, film buffs. And so uh, it's it's going to be an exciting season. Uh, Greg Turkington. And, uh, Gre Greg, tell me when this season starts. Well, you know, with these uh, Internet programs, you can watch it 24 hours a day. It's going to start tomorrow morning. They put it up on adultswim.com and also on YouTube. Uh, but really, the choice is yours as to when you want to watch it, similar to movies. You know, there's people who like matinees. There's people who like midnight movies. And then there's people like myself that, that like them all. You know, sure, so, sure. Uh, that's one of the good things. Any time of day for you. For you. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes uh, a morning movie is nice. If you, you get a, a family movie like a Kramer versus Kramer. Mm -hmm. uh, something at midnight would be more of your, uh, you know, your Dracula or uh, maybe a Godzilla movie or Frankenstein, something like that. Sure, sure. Now, now, um, yeah, a lot of different types of movies. That's a crazy thing about movies. There's so many different kinds. And that, so that's... many different kinds. And, and, you know, a lot of them are classics, which is a genre into itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's one of my favorite things about On Cinema is... You're, you're five, five seasons in now? What's Is this going to be the sixth season starting? This is the sixth season as a televised program. Now, mm -hmm. we started out strictly as a podcast, mm -hmm. and the ratings were so good and the interest was there that we started filming the show. And uh, now it's the foremost uh, uh, movie show on television or on the Internet at this point. Yeah, and, and you guys are, are deep, and I, I guess I should say... When I say you guys, um, you had a, there was a, a, you were not the sole host of On Cinema. No, the no. The show was originally uh, created by Tim Heidecker, who did a great job as the host. He didn't always have his movie expertise down, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But as a host, uh, you know, he was fantastic. Sometimes we'd get a little too into the personal melodramas, as I called them, the soap opera aspects of his own life. And, uh, you know, we're trying to get away from that and focus more on movies this season. Uh, you know, some of his medical problems and marital problems and things like that tended to overwhelm the movie coverage, which is really why people are tuning in. So this season, I can give you 100% assurance that it's all going to be movies all the time. Mm -hmm. Popcorn classics, uh, Oscar picks. And, uh, you know, new movies. Mo movies come out every week. That's the nice thing about them. Yeah. I, I want to let everybody know we have uh, Greg Turkington on the show. He is the host. The host. You are not a co-host. You, you are in the host chair now. I'm the host. Now, I used to be sort of the resident expert. And I got to say, from moving across the row to the host seat, I really... Uh, started to feel for Tim because it's hard to be a host and an expert. And that's why I've had to bring in a second expert uh, to provide some expert commentary along with what I would give to the show. Mm -hmm. And the, can you can you talk about this second person? I'll tell you, I just we just taped the first episode, which airs tomorrow. We just taped it tonight. Okay. We just were able to sign this deal last night to get this expert, and I think it's best to keep it a surprise. A lot of people are excited to find out who this is going to be. Oh. I can only say it's somebody that you've all heard of and that you're all going to be very excited to see uh, in that guest seat. Mm -hmm. 
You know what's kind of funny about what you're doing is you – it's not unlike a movie what you're doing here in terms of your – your whoever is going to take that second chair. You're keeping it as like a thriller. Like a thriller suspense. Like uh, I'd like to uh, reference Alfred Hitchcock who was the master of suspense and one sure. of my favorite filmmakers. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's one of the great movie makers. And – um uh, you can check out on cinema the sixth season starts tomorrow on adultswim dot com and uh greg we uh we uh, you know i've been a fan of the show you have uh always been kind of dedicated to really making sure the you get the word out on what to see um movies are my passion and as you know i teach classes during the hiatus uh, at some of the local rec centers and things like that to mm-hmm. help share my expertise with others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are there movies that you would uh, uh, recommend that maybe between the two seasons, between the fifth season and the sixth season, that you didn't get to review on the show that you would want people to, to make oh, sure yeah. they check out? I mean, every week, every week there's several more like that. One that I think you're going to be hearing a lot about uh, in the coming weeks is one of my favorite movies and, and actually one of my Oscar picks for 2014 was Annie, which was a remake of an old, old black and white classic. And they've done it up great. And um, as you may have known, this is one of the scandals that we actually revealed on, on cinema. It was not reported in any media. We were the first to break this story. You noticed that when they announced the Oscar nominations for Best Picture this year, they only announced eight. Now, last year there were 10 Best Picture nominations. The year before, there were 10 Best Picture nominations. But the ratings on the Oscars have been going down steadily every year. So what they decided to do was to put out the eight, and then a day or two before the Oscars air, they're going to leak the other two. Because, in fact, there are 10 Best Picture nominations. They're not going to let you know. Oh, wow. Keep an eye on the news on Thursday or Friday before the Oscars. I can reveal here for the first time, because I do have the insider information, The two uh, final nominees for Best Picture are Annie and The Hobbit 3, and the award is going to go to The Hobbit 3. Oh, you're actually telling us the Best Picture? Yeah. You, not just... Wow. No, no, it's going to be an upset, it's going to be a surprise. I mean, anyone who's an insider who knows their stuff knows it's not a surprise. Of course, The the Hobbit was uh, critically acclaimed, one of the greatest series ever to take place on a screen. Uh, They kind of wanted to play with the outrage that the public would have when it appeared that The Hobbit wasn't being nominated. And so people have been mad. You see on blogs and on Facebook and uh, just listening to conversations on the bus, you hear people who are saying, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to tune in if The Hobbit's not nominated or Annie's not nominated. Mm -hmm. But that's why a couple days before the actual awards, they're going to say, oh, hold on. These movies were nominated. We just didn't announce it yet. So tune in. And you're going to see the greatest ratings Oscars ever had. Because they teased at the last second yep. two more movies. Just like, a, just like a good movie would do. Yeah, And, that... you know, and, the, and I, I think it's brilliant. And I'm really excited to see Peter Jackson step up to the plate and pick up another Oscar and uh, get on with his career making great movies. And I know um, you're, you're a big fan of the, the, the franchise and... Um... You've been a really uh, a, a champion of these movies as they've come out over the over the years, and um, you it's it's kind of when you, I know you made a point of saying when the final movie in a series comes out, then it's um, it's usually the one that cleans up at the yes. at the at the awards. So this exactly. is this is sticking to that that template. You've you've explained and because you also even you've made a point on the show of saying and this is something I've kind of kept a, kept a, a, a you know an eye toward is that when the final James Bond movie happens, then mm-hmm. that's the one that'll clean up awards wise. All right, I'm going to give you another scoop. They actually already manufactured the Oscar for James Bond, and they have it in a vault. Uh, just outside of Hollywood in Van Nuys. They're so confident that that movie will take home the Best Picture Award 
uh, they're just waiting to see when that actual final Bond movie hits the streets. Now, I hope that that award stays in the vault for another thousand years, because I do not want to live in a world where there isn't another James Bond movie to look forward to. But I can absolutely guarantee you with 100% certainty that the last James Bond movie will take home the best picture. So when they say this is the final Bond movie, that's the one that gets critically acclaimed. As well as they're all commercially. critically acclaimed, yeah. and they're all commercially acclaimed. It's just they don't get that magic Oscar touch. I guess you know that yes. I mean, mm -hmm. which is a whole other thing, a whole other thing. Sure. Now, can you go into into anything with the the kind of the the whatever you want to call it in terms of Tim Heidecker, who was the who was the host of on cinema for the yeah. for the entire run, but then it. It fell apart, I guess, as a fan of the show. It, it got it, it got very messy very fast. And there, yeah. there was a lot of personal stuff and... Um, acupuncture. And, I don't know if you saw some of that. He had an acupuncturist on the show and was trying to turn it into a health show. Mm -hmm. And then he also I, had a, uh, a motorcycle accident. Yeah, I mean, if you call it an accident, he fell off the motorcycle when it was parked uh -huh. at a Walmart parking lot. I mean, uh, you know, that's yeah, it's, that's a, not a very, it's not a very glamorous accident. That's not, uh, you know, like Easy Rider or something. Sure. Well, exactly. It's not a uh, moving accident. It's technically an accident, but it's not a... It's not like he was going 80 miles an hour on his motorcycle. and He crashed. was going zero miles an hour. I mean, I don't know if the, the kickstand sometimes on these things is faulty. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what it was. But, uh, you know, Tim's a great host. I mean, and, and he, he created the show. Um, I will always uh, salute him for bringing me on. I mean, he didn't know where to find a movie expert. And he, and he knew that I had the expertise and I have the collection. Now, I just recently entered the Guinness Book of World Records uh, for watching 501 movies in 501 days. Uh, when I first went on the show, I didn't have that feather in my cap, mm -hmm. and he saw something in me, and so I'll always salute him for doing that. It's just that, you know, he has his, his issues and things. He, he's moved to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and is very involved with the motorcycle community there mm -hmm. and with water rights and this sort of thing. just mm -hmm. doesn't really have time to keep up on the movies sure and that's what the show is supposed to be about and so i think he felt uh with some of his personal problems uh he fathered a child out of wedlock and that type of thing uh, you know those were taking over the program and it would get out there where we had uh less and less time to review the movies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we we're getting complaints every week you know i don't care about this or that i just want to hear what movies sure i should go see this weekend and yeah. so uh, it was a mutual decision that, that uh, I should take over the show and he should go on to do uh, bigger and better things out there in Jackson Hole. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Greg Turkington, the host of On Cinema, on the, on the line. And he is uh, the host of the sixth season of On Cinema, which starts tomorrow over at adultswim.com. And um, Greg, I'm actually, there's a call here that I'm being told to take. Okay. I'm going to just put this through. Hello? Um, yes, hello. Um, I have a question for Greg Turkington. Can you hear uh, the caller, Greg? Hello? Hello? Hi. I, it, it, one bumped the other one. We're just trying to get the lines squared here. Let me, should I lock it? Let's see here. I'll Movie see it's doing questions that. Questions you have, trivia, okay. anything like that. There I, we go. Uh, we have them. it. Caller, are you on, caller? Yes, um, I have a question. I wanted to know what uh, Greg Turkington's favorite actor is. Who's his favorite actor is? Oh, wow, there's so many. I would probably say... Uh, hey, it's, uh, it's actually Tim Heidecker. I'm goofing on you. Oh, Tim. Oh, <laughs> Tim oh. <laughs> I guess my favorite actor for tonight is Tim Heidecker, because he really yeah. fooled me there. That's, that's some good acting. <laughs> Good job, Hi, everybody. Good to hear from you, Tim. Hey, Tim. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Tom. Um, how's it going? It's going I good. Did. We. Uh, I wanted to get you. Yeah, I got. Uh, that, that was good. We have Greg on the line, kind of talking about the new season of On Cinema. 
Yeah, listen, I just wanted to call in and wish you all the best. Um, and, Thank you. you know, wish you, wish you, hold on. Let me just say what I want to say. I want to wish you all the best and wish you luck. Uh, this show means so much to me, um, and I feel like it's in good hands. You, if anybody's going to take this show into the future, it's going to be you. And I know that um, we always haven't gotten along and we've had issues, but tonight is the night to say um, good luck. And I'm going to be watching, and I think the On Cinema family is going to be watching, and we're all hoping for the best. Well, um, you know, I've got some good news. We finished taping the episode about an hour and a half ago, and I can uh, honestly say it's the best episode of the entire uh, six seasons that we've done uh, wow. so far. Okay, well. So that, that's great. It's great to know. It's great news. And thanks for your congratulations. I hope you, uh, hope you enjoy this one as much as the rest of the audience will. All right. Well, I also just want to say, you know, uh, the, I don't know if people are fans or familiar with the Decker web series. Uh, the Decker ebook just hit the shelves on Amazon today. So I encourage everybody to go there and check that out. That would be great if everybody supported that. Now for, uh, I for, know, Greg, you want to see that do as do well as uh, oh as well. Fantastic. Decker is my second passion. It's a great movie that was put out there on the web in chunks, and and uh, I get so much acclaim for it. And it's a real feather in my cap to have been involved. And I just pray that Decker Two is is on its way. That you've been working on that out there in Jackson Hole. Mm -hmm. Now, for people who don't know, Decker, Tim, Tim, Tim Heidecker, mm -hmm. Decker is your, it's a, it's like your franchise, your, your, um, well, what would you call it? Like an action franchise? Oh, it was a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a web series that is a movie as well, because you can watch it as a movie. It's a mini series. Um, uh, and it's a, it's my, it's one of my passion projects. I've written it, directed it, produced it, star in it. And uh, it's really sort of my, uh, a tip of the hat to some of my favorite films, uh, the Jack James Reacher Bond. series. Uh, not, not James Bond as much, but you know, Spies and uh, that sort of, uh, even Chuck Norris and guys like that who are combined action with international intrigue, except the twist is that we're fighting Arabs such as Taliban and, you know, sort of making it more up to date. So sure, you see it, a lot of that because it's, of the whole it, PC police that clamps down and makes you sort of everybody has to, all the bad guys have to be a certain, they can't be Arabic and that sort of thing. So we changed that and we, uh, we've got a great cast. We've got Joe Estevez and of course, Greg Turkington was in the first season. Mm -hmm. And I'm right now trying to figure out a way to make a second one because you know, it's very challenging to make anything these days, let alone things that are so up against the grain. Uh -huh. But um, that's what I'm doing. I'm in here and I'm calling you guys from the uh, from Jackson Hole. I'm outside of a Starbucks here. And um, uh, Jackson I'm, Hole I'm is the, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Yeah. Which is a pretty I mean, I, a pretty uh, uh, is it? What would you? Well, it's like a getaway for a lot of lot of uh, famous people. Well, there's that element to it, but where I'm at, which is not, is about 15 miles south of. Uh, the, the resorts and sort of the, the lodge and everything is a little more of your sort of classic Americana uh, middle of, you know, flyover country, as we say, because to support those, that industry, the, uh, the tourism industry and the resort industry, you know, there's a lot of working class folks that have to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm in that community. I actually have a little bit of ranch land. I have uh, 25 acres of ranch land that I built a homestead on, but a little uh, cabin, a little uh, sort of a home kit that I put together and that's where I'm living and it's challenging I mean going from living in Hollywood and doing the whole Hollywood scene and now sort of living off the land so to speak has been really really tough mm -hmm. do you yeah. miss uh, but but you if I and I know this I don't know how sensitive you are about this Tim but um, I you know it, it happened on the show so I think it's fair game to bring up is during the, the fifth season of the show you seemed preoccupied with things other than reviewing movies on the show and it well right yeah and you had a motorcycle accident right. um which which was I mean, it was like a motorcycle you it tipped over on you is that what it was 
Yeah, uh, you know, I can't really talk too much about that because that's sort of an active lawsuit right now. Uh, against against who who is it an active are they, lawsuit? Are they suing you? Are they, they, they suing you at Walmart for causing a like I said? I'm not I'm not market? getting into it. I mean, it is with Walmart. There, there was issues about the signage, the handicap signage, but I can't listen. I can't get into mm-hmm. it. I'll admit though that at that period I was going through a lot of stress. I, my diabetes was in was flaring up and uh, bad head injury, and I was slapped with a paternity lawsuit. Uh, which I'm still involved with as well, and the, the the plan was get out of town, get out of Dodge. So I've been in and I've been in Jackson Hole, and now that's becoming an issue because if you look up, if you Google something for me, Jackson Hole water rights, uh huh, and it's insane. It's just like it's going to blow your mind. Everybody should know about this because it could happen to you if you don't, unless you live, you know, if you live in New York or something like that, where you you kind of have a strong municipal uh, waterworks system. But where I'm at. You know, I've got my 25 acres, and it sounds crazy, but it's true. I literally don't have access to water because everything is off of wells. Uh And there is uh, the land I bought, which I'm in a lawsuit with this guy now too. Is there's no there's no wells on that on that property on that Uh acreage? Okay. You know, so it's really you're you're. It's it's it seems like you, and this is not to put any kind of judgment on anything, Tim. Uh Have um. I mean, I don't know. It seems like it's it's a very kind of contentious, kind of very very aggravated time for you in a lot of ways. Like you you got fed up with Hollywood, and you got fed up with the show, and right. you got fed up with uh, you know as a fan of the series. I mean, I hope this isn't saying anything out of line. You got fed up with Greg, and uh, it seemed well. I think it's about priorities, you know. I respect and appreciate the work Greg does, but movies are not oh, the something segments that I, and that, things. I bring in a lot of outside segments for the show, you know, right. that I produce but in my own time. The point is, life is about more than movies, and I know that's going to make Greg feel uncomfortable to hear that, but you can't just keep talking about movies all the time. Um, I like movies, and I like talking about them, but it's not the only thing I eat, sleep, drink, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So... That was frustrating to me, and, um, you know, along with the, the other things, it was time for me to go. But, but you know, I'm still involved very actively with the on-cinema family, which mm-hmm. people go, huh? Because what, what are you saying? You're not the host anymore. In a lot of ways, they're my children, and they're, they, you know, they look up to me. And um, so I'm supportive of on-cinema. That doesn't mean I'm going to be sitting in the host chair. But I'm going to be involved. No. I'm going to be kind of the puppet master, um, you know, with the strings. You can almost picture um, somebody up in the clouds and the strings coming down. And uh, not 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 for the actual <laughs> show, though, because I, you know, I did everything on this premiere episode. I didn't even have a conversation with Tim about it, and I brought in my own expert, my own segments, and things like that. So I, I, I would say that those strings were cut. Mm-hmm. So you well, it sounds like you two might be in two different places in terms of that. Uh, that's that. Those are pretty. Uh, th- those well, are very. Well, no, just think about it this way. Yeah, hold on. You have to think about think about it this way. I gave you the show, right? Now, right. That doesn't mean it's not mine. Um, yeah, you so can, it's because... always no because it's always been mine. It always will be mine, in a, in a way, because it's something that I created. And it's coming from me that's why i'm so invested in it that's why i care that it does well that's why i gave it to you to take care of um not to go keep going back to this idea of god uh in the sky but you know you're a caretaker of the universe that i created um but that's like and george lucas he gave the god star creates, wars god to disney away. and disney now owns star wars and lucas has nothing to do with it he's got no input and and he's just become uh, sort of a well, joke. I mean, did you I, have input into this first episode, Tim? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And that's that. I'm completely hands off. I don't want. I like I said, I don't have time to deal with it. So, it's not but then you're I'm interested in dealing with. I'm not sure how huh? you could consider yourself like a puppet master then. In the grand scheme, in sort of the overall um, holistic approach, when you're looking at on cinema. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I'm going to be protective, like a father is of his of his flock, uh, the shepherd is of his flock. If if I see the da- the brand becoming damaged, I'm going to obviously do something about it because that's my reputation. Okay, okay, uh, that's that's but fair. Tr- but, well, but why I, if you see the first episode trust, and it's and better than any right of the episodes you ever show. did? I mean, it, if the show, if the first episode's better than all the other episodes put together. Uh, I think the right thing for you to do would be to just to walk away completely at that point. Well, that's a whole de- different conversation, and, and that that would be amendments to the contracts and stuff. You should look at the paperwork because it's pretty clear um, in in respect to you know where the real decisions are being made. But I, I I'm not I don't I didn't want this conversation to go in this direction. I want nothing but the best. Like I said at the top of the show or the top of this. A uh, call. I, uh-huh. I want the, nothing but the very best for the show and for you and for all your listeners as well, Tom. Oh well, thank you. Uh, we, <clears throat> you're we'll ta- gonna love it because we now have two experts on the show, and it's 100 percent focused on movies, and the audience is gonna be so happy for once. There's not gonna be any disappointed well, viewers that, that, that we've had that, throughout the run of the show. You, you, with all these you talk like interviews. you talk as if as if the past five seasons or something that was unsuccessful. And I do resent that a little bit. You keep saying, no, you know, finally the audience is going to like. But you, but you don't understand that you're where you are now because of the work that I did to get us here. Okay? So you're throwing okay. everything we've done, everything we've built under the bus. For what? No, I'm saying it's, it's you've built a, a solid foundation, and now I'm erecting a castle on that foundation. No. Well, that's uh, that's pretty extreme. I mean, in turn, yeah. because, I mean, no offense to you, Greg, but Tim kind of was the 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 star of the show. Yeah, he was the it's host. Like there's no star. The week. stars are in the movies. This is a movie review show. You have a host, and then you have a resident expert. That's the format of these types of shows. There's no, 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 no. I understand that, but in terms of the hosting. Tim was like the 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 he was like the attraction the the thing that made the show happen to start with. Well, he's the best host of all time. I I will give him that. I well, that just does not gel, that does not gel with this this, this perception that that you, when you say finally the audience is going to be happy and I've made the best show of the entire series. You know, you there's that de- sort of you can't how, you can't sit on both sides of that one. It feels like there's something. It feels like there's a lot of bad blood running between you two no, guys. No, no, I just think it's just a misunderstanding. Let me put it this way: if Tim had a show where he was hosting the opening of a soup can, it would be a good show because he's a good host. But sometimes people want movie expertise. They're not tuning in just to see a great host at work. They'll say, "Oh my God, this guy's the greatest host I've ever seen." But I really want to know more about the movies. I want to know. Mm-hmm who's going to win the Oscar and that type of thing. When the host is sidetracking on talking about his acupuncture wounds and things, that's where the show was derailed for a lot of viewers. I appreciate I understand what you're saying. There's no hard feeling, Tom. There's no bad blood between us. Oh, there's none between us. Don't worry. With me and you, we're we're, we're square. Between me and and Greg. Oh, between you and Greg. Okay. And I don't... uh, We're hot-blooded guys. We each... We're very strong opinion. Sometimes Sometimes the... you know, it goes there, mm-hmm. um, but that doesn't mean I, I have a ton of respect. That doesn't mean I don't have a ton of respect for him. The point I just want to make is, Greg, I'm going to be watching you like a hawk on this. That's all. Well, I think you're going to love it, you know? Because it's I your think. franchise, ultimately. You look at it as it's your baby, Tim. It's always going to be my baby, no matter what happens. Uh-huh. I don't care if, you know, four, 40 years from now and some, you know, t- some young kid hosts a Haley Joel Osmond Somebody like that is hosting the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be, be watching it like then. a hawk. Mm-hmm. And I reserve the right, and I reserve the right, let me make this perfectly clear, I reserve the right to take back what's mine. Wow. And I don't think I need to. You know, I was offered I don't think I will either. Bit the dust. when this show bit the dust because Tim ran off in, in a snit, I was offered a deal to do my own show called Our Cinema with Jimmy McNichol, and we looked at that deal, and, and I said, you know what, I'm loyal to On Cinema. I don't want Our Cinema. I want to keep On Cinema alive. What Tim has done is incredible. There's never been a show like this. 
Mm-hmm. I want to keep it going. I don't want it to die. I don't want all his hard work to be for nothing. And so, yeah, I agreed to continue on and to accept Tim's generous offer to take over the show. And what I plan on doing is taking it into newer heights and making it something that we can all be proud of and a place for people to finally get some movie expertise. Well, look, I, I can only say, as a fan of the entire run, the um, I'm looking forward to the new season, but I have to say... There's something between you guys that is very, it's, it's just like, I, I don't know. It just, it feels like it really kind of, it, it's probably a good thing that you're each on your own path now and kind of carving yeah, yeah. out your own thing because it sounds like there, it might be that you guys just can't share the ball anymore. And oh, I, might think be. I, I just want to just want to ask one one favor for Greg for tomorrow's show. If you could please, please, please plug the Decker ebook on Amazon. Uh, you're in it. It does you good. You wrote the foreword. The foreword, by the way, or he wrote the introduction. I wrote the foreword. It's a really great novel. It's a novelization of the Decker one series. Please, please, I love please mention it on the show tomorrow. Well, mm-hmm. we already taped the episode, so it's, it's, I mean, the episode we finished taping an hour and a half ago, and I didn't know that the book was out an hour and a half ago. Now, I can make sure to tweet about it and to tell everyone I see to buy that book, because it's uh, a real achievement, but it's, it's too late for tomorrow. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's too late, but I really the love whole the idea. book. I... Okay, yeah. I mean, where else am I going to promote it? Where else is that book going to get promotion? If not, Well, how about we a... get together and we'll start filming season two of Decker and maybe work into the script some plugs for the book? Like maybe the book goes missing or I something. Said, no, we're not brainstorming and, Decker too. And I Kingston has so to fall. find the book. You right? know, Kingston has to crack the code to get you. into a safe. I'm not, to I'm, get that book I'm not out. Doing it with you. No, this don't talk about Decker. You're not allowed to talk about Decker anymore right now. Okay, so that's that's off limits for him. <clears throat> wow. Well, guys, you're treading, you're treading on thin ice already now. I have to say, um, it's it's a, it, this is not the turn I thought that would happen for kind of. I was excited about the new season of On Cinema uh, starting tomorrow on Adult Swim at uh, adultswim.com. And now it uh, it kind of feels like... I, I hope I'm able, as a fan of the show, to watch the show without seeing this stuff kind of cast over the, the, the top of no, it. You no, know what I mean? Things are good. Things are good. I mean... Tim's got his motorcycle buddies. I've got my movie. I'm not doing a motorcycle thing anymore. No, I'm oh, done really? with that. What happened? Yeah, Why are I you got done with that? Guys here, and um, a very quick story. I got my ass kicked uh, about a week ago. By who? And, um, huh? By some by motorcycle guys? Yeah, biker guys. These guys who think they're tough shit, mm-hmm. and um, came at me pretty hard. And uh, I didn't break anything, but I got hurt pretty bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I just, you know, I, it's been, it's tough out here. I, I, there's not a lot of, I don't have a lot of people on my side. Well, I, I, uh, and, I, uh, as people, they keep saying, Mr. California, I changed my registration. I've changed my, got a new driver's license. Everybody has this, this chip on their shoulder. They think I'm uh, this Hollywood guy. Mm-hmm. And they just, uh, I got, I was in the post office. The other day, and I got pushed, I got mm-hmm. shoved, mm-hmm. and, you know, they're calling me gay and this and that, mm-hmm. and it's just... It's rough out it's, there. Uh, it's hard, and i got to go to Walgreens to get water. I'm bathing in Dasani. Uh-huh. You know? Well, t- Tim, I... I um... I'm sorry to I'm sorry to bring that into this conversation. No, but, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, yeah. i, um, I got to go. i got to run. Um, I hope you're sure safe out there. I hope you're yeah, safe, because... I hope you're safe. Cause is, there this... a dollar, is there a dollar tree there? Because you can get like a gallon of Niagara water for a dollar. Yeah, I'm looking into that. There is one. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you're bathing I, in Dasani. I, I got to go. Security guard's looking at me. He's going to kick my ass. I okay. Go. Well, be safe, Tim. Good luck. 
Good luck, Greg, and uh, thanks for letting me call yeah. in time. I, yeah. I really do have to of go. Of course. Thanks right. for your support, and let me know if you're in town. Maybe we can get together at Carabas or something and talk about the old times. Hello? I think he's gone. All right, well. Well, Greg, well, good. Greg Turkington, um, that was that was different, I guess. Uh, I, uh, I, you know, Tim's a very passionate guy, and he's mm-hmm. always brought a lot to the show, and it's mm-hmm. good to catch up with him, and, and hopefully uh, uh, he tunes in and, and sees what the rest of the world will see in this new mm-hmm. season, which is that it's uh, the premier source for movie information. All right, well, people can check out On Cinema at AdultSwim.com starting tomorrow season six and greg uh congratulations and um thank you for the movie scoops also that was very exciting yeah thank you and also you know let your listeners know i mean uh you can do this anytime when i'm off the air or whenever about uh the the world record that i broke uh late last year for watching 501 movies in 501 days i'm very proud of that and we are going to have a banquet at some point this year to celebrate all the fans are going to be invited all right, so people should check that out and uh, get ready to celebrate you for your accomplishment, and they should also uh, check out on cinema tomorrow. Tomorrow at nine thirty or ten a.m. Eastern, uh, AdultSwim dot com and YouTube dot com also will have it. Cool, it's very very exciting. Uh, best of luck with the season, and uh, I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you, Tom, and you've got the same name as Tom Cruise, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's, it's something I, you know, not that I take pride in it, but it's something I I think about, so. Yeah, it's Thanks. pretty cool. Cool. All right. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Bye. That was exciting. Greg Turkington and uh, Tim Heidecker checking in there. Um, I'm going to tell you about...